First, we'll take a look at full band compressors and how the compression of sound works. Compression is the reduction of sound's dynamic range so that the louder passages are made softer, or the softer passages appear louder, or usually both. It's like the technician writing the volume fader, but there are quite a few things that a compressor can do that a human engineer is just too slow at. For example, unless you've memorized exactly where the loud and quiet spots are in a song, you'll always respond too late, because you don't know what's needed until you hear that something's wrong. But a compressor reacts to level problems almost instantly, so you can compare a compressor to a person with his hand on the volume, but it reacts much faster and more accurately. Unlike a human though, the compressor doesn't have a feel or instinct, it just does what you set it to do, which is why it's very important that you understand what the settings on a compressor mean and what they affect. Now let's look at some compressor settings. When you look at a typical compressor, these are some of the basic adjustment options that you'll see. There'll be threshold, ratio, attack, release, gain, knee, and sometimes others. It's relatively easy to understand how a compressor works, if you know what these options mean and what they affect. Threshold is the level at which the compression kicks in. Often there'll be the option of a minus 60 decibel to a zero decibel range. Well, this means that if you set your threshold to minus five decibels, it'll only start compressing or lowering the level of your volume when it reaches or exceeds minus five decibels. Ratio controls the amount of compression or reduction that will be applied to the sound once the threshold level is reached. For example, a ratio of four to one means that when the level above your threshold increases by four decibels, it'll only allow an increase of one decibel. Ratio levels of infinity to one mean that it'll never go over your threshold setting, which is also known as limiting. The attack rate sets how fast a compression takes place. Compressors often have the option of setting it between 0.1 milliseconds to 400 milliseconds or more. This means that if you set your attack rate to 0.1 millisecond, it'll basically begin compressing almost immediately, waiting only 0.1 millisecond to act. Using a slower attack results in the compression increasing gradually, which then allows more variation in your sound. For example, by using a slightly slower attack time for a snare drum, the initial crack of the drum gets through, but if you set the attack to 0.1 milliseconds, you'd lose that cracking hit of the snare drum and most of its power with it. Or setting a longer attack time for a guitar allows more of that pick attack to come through. A longer attack time with a kick drum lets more of that knock through of the pedal striking the skin. Release is the rate at which the compression backs off once the level has fallen below the threshold again. Often you'll find release settings of 50 milliseconds all the way down to 4 seconds or more. Another example, say you're compressing a crash cymbal. It needs a fast attack but a slow release to allow for that long sustain of the cymbal sound. Short release times allow for more flexibility for adapting to the signal but can cause fast changes in your volume if your threshold is set too drastically. Longer release times create more of an even level, but small variations in your sound level will be ignored and thus almost lost. Next we have hold time. Hold time sets a slight delay before the release function kicks in. Then we have a knee setting. The knee setting is the compression level intensity. A hard knee means that compression will happen immediately after the threshold level is reached, but a soft knee means that the compression is gradually applied. So while the attack setting decides how fast a compressor acts, the knee controls how fast that full amount of compression is applied. Soft means there's a gradual increase from none to full compression, and hard knee means a transition from none to full compression instantly. Then we have the gain option. Gain controls the amount of makeup volume to be added or subtracted from the compressed output signal is to adjust the sound level after compression so that it kind of matches the level of the input. This is especially useful when you bypass the compressor to compare what it's like without compression, yet keeping your approximate levels to compare with. Sometimes you'll see an option for peak or RMS compression. The difference between peak and RMS compression is how your compressor quote unquote listens to your sound. When set to peak, the compressor is looking for peaks, responding more accurately to short signal peaks. 
while RMS compression works by detecting a signal's average level, which is much like your ear adjusting to loud or soft sounds over time, rather slowly. For mixing individual tracks, especially percussive sounds, it's best to use peak compression. Let's take a quick look at the gain reduction meter. This visual meter is a useful aid to see the amount of reduction being applied to the signal. For example, a meter reading minus 5 decibels shows the compressor is attenuating or lowering the input signal by at least 5 decibels to keep it at the threshold level. So the more lights that are on, the greater the amount of limiting you're doing, and the more compressed the sound is. Let's take a quick look at the stereo link button. When working with stereo signals, it's important that both channels are treated the same, otherwise the stereo image will shift if one channel receives more compression than the other. For example, if something loud plays out in the left channel, then the right channel volume will be reduced, and everything else will also be turned down in the mix. So the stereo link switch of a two-channel compressor simply forces both channels to work together, based on an average of the two channels. When switched to stereo link, one set of controls usually becomes the master of both channels. By default, it's often the left channel, but it depends on your compressor.